Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the high grade Load Estray Omega. And once again, you can tell from that box, this is a premium Bandai exclusive. I got mine through Bayou, you can too. Link in the description. Man, what can I say about this mobile suit? This thing is ridiculously cool. So I'm gonna wind back a little bit and I particularly do not like the Load Estray Omega. I'm a huge, huge fan of Gundam G Generation Cross Rays, the SD game that is on PC, could be on other platforms too. I love it and love it to bits. And in that game, it's referred to as the Lord Estray Omega. So throughout this review, I'm gonna go with Lord because it is a much cooler name. Lord Estray gives a whole different image. So yeah, I'm gonna say if you've never played SD Gundam G Generation Cross Rays, I highly recommend that you do. It's just such a fun game. You can play so many different mobile suits from a whole bunch of different worlds. That of course, or should I say universes? That's Iron-Blooded Orphans, Seed, Double O, and Gundam Wing. So you can make your dream team of Gundams and pilots. It's so, so much fun and it is moddable too. But yeah, winding back a little bit from that to the Lord Astray right here. This is from the Seed manga, Princess of the Sky, as far as I know, and this is one hell of a design. When we got the rebake a few years ago, two, I'm not sure anymore, while building that, I realized we did have a Lord Estray inside of it, so I did build it as that, and it was such a cool, cool suit. So if you want a kind of a Lord Estray with a real edgy look, you can still get that by getting the double rebake kit. But if you want the pure Lord Estray Omega, then this kit right here is absolutely perfect. Of course, it is P Bandai though. This is one hell of an Estray with one hell of a sword, and I am absolutely in love with this design. I say this all the time, but I feel like this might be my favorite Gundam of all time. And I love the SD version. The way you get that so early in the game cuts through absolutely everything with no effort whatsoever. This thing is a beast. Let's check it out. So now jumping into the aesthetics, and this is what this kit right here looks like. Out of box, straight built with a little bit of panel lining. I used a gray panel liner on this because the last white kit I used a black panel liner on, I kind of realized really quickly that it was a little too harsh. This is the gray port type panel liner and it worked out perfectly. Now, there are some stickers for this kit, a lot of color correcting stickers. I wanted to see how this would turn out without using them and I am still super happy with what I've got right here, so I will not ever be using those stickers. However, we do have some sticker style decals for the almost tribal or tattoo-esque kind of design that is on various places on the Lord Astray. So let's chuck them on and see what we get. So as for the particular stickers, this is the sheet right here. And now, if you're not so adept with your hands or whatever when you're attaching stickers, you don't want a couple of tips to make this a little easier because I definitely need them. First off, if you want to be able to use both of your hands, I suggest sticking a big old ball of blue tack down on your desk so you can actually keep the piece in place while you use both your hands to attach these on. And if you're like me and you're four cups of coffee deep and your hands are a little bit on the shaky side, I suggest using the spray bottle with a slightly soapy water solution on the plastic first. That means you're actually able to lay down the stickers move them around a little bit, use a Q-tip or a cotton bud to actually take away the excess moisture, wait a little while, and you'll have them perfect every single time. Or you could just take the gamble and try and slap them on like I did. As for the stickers that we do have, we've got these kind of tribal designs up on the shoulder plates. We have some extra details, adding more red to the wrists like so. And finally, we do have a bit of a lion insignia on the chest. All of these are fitted to the parts, so it's very hard to actually see the boundary of the stickers. So these have been designed well, almost like old real grade stickers. Pretty cool. So now that we've got the stickers on, taking another look at the Lord Astray right here. This is one ridiculous design. From the over-the-top V-fin on the head, which is not even a V anymore, I can count one, two, three, four, essentially six antennas, not even including the red part. That is a lot of spikage going on on the head. The face looks badass. Around back, we have pretty much a second face, just like we would have seen with the Lord Estray Double Rebake. There's tons of panel lining opportunities on this all over the place, especially on the white to break up the armor. It is super, super detailed. And if you like painting details, there's tons on this to paint. One thing I have to say that absolutely shocked me about this kit though is the metallic gloss injection red looks superb. 
It goes very well with the semi-gloss white and the semi-gloss black, and the whole thing just gels together really well. Now, if I had any minor complaint about the looks of this particular kit, it's not even the looks of this kit at all. It's that we don't have any nice, expressive hands included in the box to match with some nice poses. But besides that, this thing, visually to me, is pretty much perfect. Now, I will mention once again, there is a whole ton of stickers in this box that I did not use for some green segments, which are meant to be like lights or reflective segments like that, and a whole bunch of black and gray and red too. So color accuracy wise, this isn't the greatest, but like I said, out of box, it still looks pretty damn rad. Let's check out what it comes with. So now jumping into the accessories and here's everything the high grade Lord Astray Omega comes with, and it's mainly just a sword and a mount for using with it. Let's check them out. So first up in here, definitely the main event inside of this kit, that is the Long Load Sword, or is it the Load Long Sword? One or the other. This has a whole lot going on, and by God, is this an absolutely gorgeous sword. On, of course, obligatory RX-78-2-4 scale, so it is longer. The blade itself is longer than the RX-78 is tall. That's a nice sword. So attaching this into the hand is the super simple way if you attach the hand on like so, without the back. The back then pops on just like so, and I will mention that they did actually do this quite smartly. We've got a chubby bit right here and a chubby bit right here so it won't slide too far. And this part of the handle is actually squared off ever so slightly. So that means the hand will not rotate. So that does mean when it's holding onto it, it holds onto it well. Attaching it into the arm then is the usual ball joint attachment just like so. And it may flop a little bit but once again we do have a nice design element right here. Whereas the cuff will actually stop it from moving and you can actually move that cuff around so it can be pointing in any of the four directions. So handy. So I will mention that this kit does suffer ever so mildly from the fact that this is a big old sword attached to a fairly lightweight Gundam. So that means it will throw it off balance. Some of the joints, especially in the shoulder, have a little bit of an issue with holding up the sheer mass of this sword. But usual joint tightening techniques, a bit of top coat should deal with those sort of aspects. Just worth mentioning though, out of box, a little bit loose. So even without using an action base, even without tightening up the joints, if you use both hands, you should get some kind of cool pose out of this, like what you're seeing right here. However, I will mention I just knocked it right over right there, so it isn't very secure. So action base this thing up, none included. So just like you would see in cross race, this is a sword that has multiple uses. So this is the large sword state, but we also can change that. Pop this little segment out, these two swords, wait, you gotta pop this one out too. These two sword parts, which make the big sword, can be separated just like this. Getting that handle back on there, and there we go. In the manual, this is referred to as twin sword state. Even though we do only have one of these handles included, so that means you can only do this right here with just the one. However, I guess this doesn't matter so much because you can actually pop these segments out like this, and these swords have their own inbuilt handle, so that just flips out and back just like so. So now you've got a handle towards the back of this, and this can also be flipped back and attached in to create this right here, which is referred to as the Twin Sword State Double Edge. So we've got an edge on this side and that edge, and of course we can do that with both of these. So just grab the other one, flip this out all the way back, then bring this forward, and around like so, and then you've got yourself a pair. So when these are split into two swords, they attach in the exact same sort of way. That is the handles pop into the hands, these are flush, hold on perfectly, and then you pop the back of the hands on, and they attach into the wrists. There's a bit of a look at what this will look like with both of those swords attached, so if you want less of a one big sword look and more of a two thinner, almost giant katana kind of feel, you can get that too. So the next part we have in here is this segment here for making the snake sword version. Now this just pops on in like this into the original handle, so it uses none of the other sword parts we had just taken a look at. And this is made out of a kind of pliable material. Now I don't know if you can actually bend this into a shape or not. I'm not going to try, but it looks like maybe or maybe not. Either way, this is another option. Lastly, then we have a storage rack for the sword which attaches into the back. These upper segments can be removed like that, and like that, and then the sword can be attached onto that rack just like so, it attaches up here, and then those segments just reattach on like so, and like that. 
to display that absolutely massive sword up on the Lord Estre's back, just like so for its storage position, just like we would have seen in SD Gundam G Generation Cross Rays. So now jumping into the articulation, and so far this is quite solid. When the sword is involved, we do get a little bit of drop I find in the hips and the shoulders a little bit, but besides that, not too bad. We do have a giggity 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 goo right here. The neck is ball jointed up top, gives you pretty much what you'd need, and it's a hinge down bottom. So this is not your typical polycap. There's it all the way forward and down, and then you can bring it back and up. And yeah, those parts fall off quite often, so you might want to cement them on. The shoulder is a polycap aligned to the front. So there's the shoulder motion forward and back. Full shoulder roll because it is a ball and socket, and we've got the full 360 spin as well. The shoulder armor is attached to the arm, so it cannot move separately. We've got this in a ball joint, can fall off reasonably easily. And as for the raising of the arm, that's as high as you will get, mainly because this thing will not get out of the way. Full 360 spin at the upper arm. As for the elbow here, it is a double jointed bend, so it gets to there. Not crazy, but not too bad. And the fist here is just your standard ball joint wrist. Moving down to the ab crunch now, it's a little further up than usual. There it is all the way to the front. And there is all the motion out to the back. So it can move out to the back quite a bit. There it is forward once again. And we also have a little bit of a side to side crunch here too. And there is the rotation side to side with a little bit of an angle to it. That's nice. Also, lost the back of the shoulder. There's not much holding that on really. The skirting armor is attached via ball joint, can move up just like so. The side skirt here is also on a ball joint, so you can get some motion out of that as well, but it never really gets in the way. And around back then, the butt flap is your typical non-moving paralyzed butt flap, but a big one. Inside the hip, then, we've got a dropping mechanism. This is not attached both sides. This is very similar to a 30-minute missions, and this can smoothly move down and forward just like so. So when that leg is reattached, it's pretty much out like that for those Big old kicks right up to the front, so that is nice. Then swinging it out to the back, that's what we get it to. And finally then, getting that back up into position, checking the splits, and not a bother. Next up, full rotation at the upper leg. Next up, the knee bend in here is extremely limited. This is probably one of the worst aspects of the kit, sadly. This, what appears to be a thruster segment, is on a ball joint, so you can rotate that all the way around and pivot it ever so slightly. And finally, getting that foot on the ground to test out the functional movement at the ankle. So there it is, all the way to the back. And yeah, that's it. And that's hyperextending that ball joint. Next up, there it is, all the way to the front. Again, a little bit limited. And finally, then there's the side to side pivot, which is not too bad. Nothing down here at the foot, then no moving toe or anything like that. So finally, then getting into that usual pose, I pop a kit in just to test what it can do. And this is not that great. This does its best just standing there, but the limited knee, ankle, and to a degree the elbows do mean that this kit can look a little bit anemic at times in poses. You'll get the standard ones out of it, but nothing over the top. The knee is definitely a disappointment. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and this is a very, very nice kit, but a kit not without its issues, and that's why it's getting silver tier for me, which is exactly what I would expect from a high-grade kit. So aesthetically, this is a mixed bag. It looks absolutely phenomenal. It's based on a ridiculously cool looking mobile suit, but it does drop the ball in some regards, mainly being some of the colors being stickers. And I'm not even talking about the green shiny ones. I'm talking about some reds and some grays. However, besides that, we do have some nice detailing, a lot of pan lining opportunities. And I do like the kind of stickers they have in here for the detailing. Those, those work really well. When it comes to the accessories, it's technically just one accessory. Sadly, we don't have any expressive hands, which would be nice, but that big old sword can do a whole load of things and looks badass. The way it's stored is extremely unique too, almost like a kind of flight pack round back. That's cool. It has a whole bunch of forms, which also means you've got a whole bunch of options. Finally, then when it comes to the actual strength of this kit, some parts like the shoulders, sides of the face may pop every now and then, has a little bit of issue with its strength to hold the sword, but you still can get some very nice simple poses out of it, limited heavily by the knees. Otherwise though, a nice kit, and definitely one that will look great up on your shelf. Anyway, as always, if you do want one of your own, I got mine through Bye. link in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching, and as always, I will see you next time.
As always, this video and every video would not be possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and on the channel members, including Caleb Engelhart, Global Frequency Studios, Go Little Rockstar, Gunply UK Limited, Joe, Kill Me Inc, Lawrence Seahack, RG59061, and Van Fawn.